crashes. Carnage. And one freaking long descent. Oh, hands are buggered. This film has it all. But can a roadie survive one of the world's biggest, gnarliest races? Can this guy with zero man bike skills tackle the mega avalanche? Hold on to your hats, it's all coming up. beautiful people. Yes, I'm back at Alpe d'Huez for the Mega Avalanche, but I'm going to be taking my very good friend Hank with me. It's going to be an absolute doozy. Yo, Blake, <laughs> ready? <laughs> no, you're not. Wear this. Huh? Wear that. Get that on. Get that on. So who is my lycra brother from another mother? Let's find out. Hank, aka James Losley Williams, a presenter on GCN. Known for his die-hard nature, Hank has taken part in Tour of Britain, raced longboards, he's a surfer, he's climbed mountains, he's ice climbed. He's a thrill seeker, a daredevil, a yes man, if you will. And when I asked him, Hank, do you want to take part in the mega with me? He replied, What's that? It is a race from the top of Pic Blanc, starting on a glaciered summit at 3,330 meters and descending 20 kilometers down into the valley of Almond. From snow to rocks to dirt, this race has it all. Oh, and adding to that, there's over 1,500 riders to navigate around, through and over. So I didn't really want to do it on my own this year. I've done it twice before, both on my, by myself. So I thought I'd bring my very good friend, Hank, well, James from GCN. He's a roadie. And I thought, hell, he'll be a good teammate because he's up for a good challenge. Oh, welcome to Alp d'Huez in the French Alps. My name's Hank. I've been a roadie for 10 years, a professional roadie. Now I work for GCN and I'm here to do what's regarded as one of the toughest mountain bike events in the world. I can't quite believe I'm saying that. I don't really know if I should be. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm dressed for some sort of battle. Everyone here has told me how brutal and scary this race is to the point where some people aren't doing it because they're not good enough and there's me who's practiced well, as many times as I can count on my fingers. But Blake seems to think I can get down it. I've never seen a dude so excited to wear like long race trousers, pads, he's got a chest, he's got a back protector, he's got his camel back, he's got a full face helmet, he's got goggles that are tinted, he's got gloves, he, we like, he's just like, why did I do road racing, man? We've made it to the top of qualifying track. It's our first practice run down, so we've got to figure out the lines. Hank, I will show you the lines. It's, there's not really much of a line. It's just snow. It's snow there, and you're just going to make sure you and stay rocks. left. And rocks. Rocks. Right. Let's get a sh** we're done with. <laughs> That's a freaking anti-grip, that is. Mental. We're at the last bit of snow on the qualies, and I think just sticking to the snow is yeah, it will get us through it safer because you've got loads of lines. People are looking like, let's go down here, there's a big horrible rock drop there, don't want to hit the snow, just, just ski through the snow, we'll get through it because there's a lot more to come. Right, you ready, Hank? Let's do it, mate. It's all right, there. So practice 
Well, the first time on the mountain and practicing on a proper downhill bike here in, um, in on Alp Duet. Well, there you go. I already don't even know what bike I'm riding. <laughs> So my thought process and how I was going to learn mountain biking in a very short amount of time was following Blake and copying his every move. So it wasn't a case of me riding in front, Blake standing behind or riding behind and shouting how I do things, lean this, lean that, put your knee out there. No, it's totally different to that. I kind of got into a roadie mindset where I was like, I'm going to sit on his wheel and I'm going to copy everything he does from his line choice to his body position to bike position in the berms and everything in between it was very much like monkey see monkey do but there were a few aspects of the qualifying route that i had to do myself because they were so techy they were so steep and they were so gnarly that if i wasn't with blake we got mixed up or we weren't able to ride together i had to be able to make my own way down it loads of lines easy line well, it's actually quite hard because it's janky and rocky and stuff. Here is the racing line. Yeah. It, you, you have to come in, okay. right? But you've got an inside line there, which is all right. But when That's it's steep, it is steep and rocky. There's some rocks in there that give you a puncture. And you don't yeah. want to puncture here because the finish is down there. But this is the biggest, gnarliest section. Yeah. This section here is crucial. Gnarly, man. It's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> what about you, Blanky? Ow. A oh. roadie doing that. I'm shaking, man. Dad, did you come in? Did you go and squirrely on top? I was too slow on top. You need to keep your momentum, yeah? Because yeah. if you go and you put your foot down, it's too late. That's it. You're in, you're in. checked out the quality course and it's basically the one that everyone's been saying how freaking gnarly it is and how hard it is it's rocky it's steep but i've got some confidence now and now it's all about linking it together but at the moment things are going good thank god we're going to the top we're going to the top top we're going to all the way up to Pec Blanc. whoa dude. I don't want Blake to know, but I'm f yeah. Man. Right, Hank, this is what the Mega Avalanche is famous for, right? This piste bash all the way down here, mass start at 3,330 meters of Pete Blanc down there, down this piste. And to be honest, you can't really practice it. We're here for practice, but it's just basically getting That's familiar ridiculous. with it. ridiculous. You're not meant to cycle down there. No, you're not, no. Harder than you think. He did really well at the top. He was like, I'm going two feet on pedals. He did for a while, and then I was like, it never works out. And more. Oh, the splits. Oh. <laughs> Thank you.
practice was not what I expected. When everyone was saying how tough this uh, event is, I thought that being tough, it had to have massive road gaps and massive jumps because that's what made a double black diamond. But in actual fact, it's the terrain, it's the technicalities, it's the rocks, it's the surface, and all that gets kind of churned up. I had only done blues and I did a black in um, Bike Park Wales, but nothing was like the terrain that we were riding on up top on Pit Blanc. It was, it's totally different and the risks are so high. You fall, you're on rocks or you overshoot a corner, you're down the mountain. So once practice was done and I got comfortable, it was literally like, you know, a matter of taking a few breaths before the overwhelming thought of having to do qualifiers. So it's Friday, it is qualifying day. Um, so I'm wave three, James is in wave 10, so I drop in at 11, he drops in at 12.15. We were like, oh no, we're separated. That were a bit nervous, well Hank's a bit nervous. I'm gonna lie, I'm not that excited now. <laughs> uh, I was a bit more confident with playing. I mean, we've changed the last three days. You know, bear in mind, I've. We barely ridden a mountain bike, and now I'm going into a race with 150 people down a technical mountain bike circuit. <laughs> it's pretty daunting, if I'm honest. So quality is tipped to be the hardest aspect of the Mega Avalanche. Some people say it's the race before the race, but it's the race that really counts because you really want to be in the Sunday race. You want to be in the main event. You don't really want to be in the challenges. You don't really want to be in the amateurs, do you? Everyone wants to be in the elite mega avalanche. So the way qualifications works is there's multiple different waves that start off at different times. Only 35 get through to the Sunday event. The next qualify for the Saturday but then it's like the infinity. So everyone gets to do the whole course, which is pretty cool. You're starting not quite on the glacier, but you've got some snow to contend with. It's full gas for best part of 20 minutes. When it comes to the qualifying, that's what I was really, really nervous about because it was the first big test. Well, it's getting all so real. We're heading up the mountain. It's qualifying day. It's the day I've been dreading. It's the day I've been worried about. It's the day I'm actually nervous for. <laughs> To make it even worse, I'm heading up all on my own. It is as well. The bird has flown the nest. How well can I do? Going into the unknown, going into the deep. It's like dropping down to the Mariana Trench. You don't know what's coming, you don't know what's... It's all black and dark, but it's so scary. Let's send it large. Oh, yeah. Left. Yeah. No going back. Here we go. Also, I don't think Blake was late, you know, but he's also really nervous. <laughs> he's not talking that much. He's got all serious. He's obviously got a race head on now, which is a big change, seeing as we've been joking around for the last three days. It's all been a bit of fun. But now he's just serious. So this is where I fly the nest. Blake's going on the third wave. Um, uh, it's where we depart, man. It's where, it's where we depart. You, we see the you at the bottom, man. I'll just see how it goes. Oh, mate. Oh, thank you so much for everything, man. You've got Good it. Good luck. Just yeah. remember, keep those tires. Yeah. Just go with easy. air in them. Go easy. Go easy. And you too, huh? Thank you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Allez, t'as son
Christ, dude. That was, that was so good. I think I stuck it. I did well, I think. I think I'm in. I think I'm in. Nice. Oh, Hank's got a, a tough job. It's a long wait before I go, which makes it even worse. I've stood up on top of the mountain, freezing my nuts off, getting more and more nervous, but I just want to get going now. So I'm ranked up right on the front. Similar nerves to a road race, but I'm diving into the deep end here under the unknown and so far out of my comfort zone. So it's a whole different feeling. Terrifying. so big, I just sent it over that tabletop. I landed and I just crunched into the bike. So much harder to race when like, you're going full gas, you're tired. Oh, mate. So technical, so skill based. I have a new massive appreciation for mountain bikers because they got balls the size of coconuts. Oh my God, I just sent it over things that I just never would have dreamed of just because I was in the mix of the race. Oh my goodness me, he's he's in for the main event. I mean, in all honesty, I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought I'd be 80th, 90th out of the 150. How are you I then? It so hard. How are you then? Yeah, all right. Yeah, knuckles all right? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. And, and? What did you get? I don't want to, I got sweaty. <laughs> I don't want to do it again. <laughs> you don't want to do it again. You have to. No. That's the best bit from up there. He blew me out of the water. I could not believe that this dude can shred a bike and keep it together it was unreal. So in preparation for the race, we thought we needed a game face, moustache game face. We said that if I make it on Sunday, then we would ride the Mega Avalanche with moustaches. We couldn't stop laughing at ourselves. We were like, what the hell are we doing? <laughs> I think we're ready for the Mega. All right, we're ready for the Mega. What? Mm. We say, what are you saying? Perfect, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, oh man, the bromance. The bromance was real. <sighs> it's romantic. We stayed in the same room the whole week. We're literally this far apart. So cool to just spend a week um, uh, being roomies and just being just classic idiots, really. The laughs, the banter, we've actually got told off by the people that own the hotel. We I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry hey, about that. See ya, bye. <laughs> you got told off. <laughs> it's been a bromance in the office, but this has actually just, we've connected like two strong chain links that we cannot snap. It makes everything so much better when you've got someone like Blake that can just lighten the mood and just like, we're, after all, we're in the mountains, we're racing mountain bikes and we're doing it with 
people we enjoy doing it with. I mean, that's what sport's all about. I've done a lot of big events. I've done a lot of big challenges, big epics, and every epic starts at the crack of dawn. Woke up at five, looked in the mirror, saw we both got tashes. It's race day. <laughs> It's my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Blake. <laughs> Thank you uh, very yeah. much. <laughs> Five thirty in the morning. It is, yeah. We're going for breakfast and uh, supporting our moustaches. We support our <laughs> race face. <laughs> it's the race face. <laughs> it's the race face. Yeah. So it's quite funny looking at each other, going, "Why on earth have we done that to ourselves?" Because they look absolutely horrendous. But then it was a case of just getting killed up, getting some coffees in, and start getting in the mindset of of doing the mega avalanche. So we were making our way up to the bubble lift uh, as the sun was rising and it was all dawning on me that this is getting pretty real now. We watched in Sam Hill just uh, trying to get in there. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Just trying to get the mindset, you know. The doors opened and suddenly there was just snow and blue sky and it was utterly stunning. I mean, up the top there was so beautiful and I absolutely love the mountains more than anywhere else. So the atmosphere on the mountain is one of pure nervousness. Everyone is so nervous and you can feel it. And then the music starts to play and you're just thinking in your mind, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna get through this. You're waiting for the line to go and then boff, you're off. Go on, Hank. Come on. Get up. Follow the rats. Why? The crazy race. Took this high line, I thought, oh heck, Hank is gonna follow me. Bye. Come on, man. You all right? I jumped and I hopped onto this like little transition thinking I'll be fine. As soon as I landed, I heard a <laughs> And I was like ah. <laughs> Got a puncture right at the start. People were overtaking. And then I was like, Hank, Hank, stop, I got a puncture. He was like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And it was like a Formula One team. We were like, right, give me the hand keys. So we'll remove the insert, get the inner tube ready, chuck the inner tube, and Hank was like, are we leaving that? Yeah, and I was like, no, hell no, dude. We put it in my backpack, we pumped it up, one big CO2 cartridge went in there. It went rock hard, and I was like, yes. We came into this together, we had to finish it together, and it was a case of just fixing the puncture together, and then getting back on our bikes, and then trying to make up as many places as possible. When we got to the meadow section, the plan that we had talked about was that Blake would take me through the skilled sections and then I could follow his line. When we got to the meadow, it was time to switch positions, like in the peloton. So Hank would now, because he's good at pedaling, I would just keep his back wheel and he would put down the pace. I then like just got in pure roadie mode and kind of put my hands on death grip and absolutely <laughs> sent it in Rika's gear. And I don't think Blake was expecting it. <laughs> 
and I struggled on the fire road. I was like, oh my gosh, he is gaining places. But I was really close to him. I was doing it, and then I started to fade. But then I got some help. Come on, Blake. Come on, dude. What happened? I got such a big puncher. Oh, Come on. Let's go, 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 go. Catch hand up. Right. He's just in front. Let's go. After the most brutal climb of your life in this event, you drop into the steep techie stuff, and this is where your body starts to scream. The comparison between road and mountain bike and racing the Mega Avalanche is the toll it takes on your whole body. Whereas road is just your legs and you can get into a rhythm and you can pedal. But mountain biking is almost a whole different ball game. It's just demanding through your whole body your body just gets annihilated. The amount of movement your body has to do and the amount of braking you have to do just absolutely kills you. So it's not just your legs, like I would think, like a road cyclist would think. You feel it in your fingers. It's your arms. Your shoulders. It's your legs. It's your breathing. It's everything. It's like you're doing the biggest bench press of your life over and over again. And that's what makes mountain biking, especially this mountain bike race, so brutal. How's the hand tank? So, mate, hands are. Because of Blake's puncture, passing people became a bit of an art, and that is so much fun. It was on the lower slopes when we got speed, weaving in and out of people. That was good. On your left, on your right, on your right. Thanks, dude. Finish. Mega Avalanche. 2023. That's one savage race. Thank you very much. I got a puncture. I took the thing out. Hank, he's good at pedaling. I give him that. Trying to stick up with him on the flats. No chance. Mega Avalanche is complete. Hi there. As much as I know about mountain biking is it is a solo event. It's you versus the clock or it's you versus the pack of hounds, you know? And I think we and I love the team aspect. We started this whole journey together and there was only one way we were gonna finish it and that is together. Just completing this event is a feat in itself for anyone. No matter how, how good you are, no matter how good your bike handling is, this event will level you. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, if you want to see another challenge with Hank and I, if we want, come on, get, get involved. You want to see Hank and Blake, let's go.